everybody, it's Kelly, and right here is my is the Haggard to my Dobby. That's right, that's T O Double D Z Pepe Lefe Schwan right there. On tonight's show, we have Sector Thirteen supervisors and actor trainers. Everyone's favorite hag, Danny Adams. Uh, she is a frontline essential worker. Uh, she is a nutritionist at a at the in the hospital system. We thank her for that. Former Sector Thirteen guard, now turned actor supervisor, Steve Diesh. Up to the minute weather reports with the dirt cast. It's a damn, it's a damn jam packed show. Let's yeah. get on with the Molly. It's about to get crazy, so let's get some news. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? Oh, y'all are back here for more weather. Okay then. <sighs> Uh, uh, I still don't know why. Springs just ain't gonna come. Just had more snow up here on the mountain last night. What is going on? But anyways, here's the forecast for the week. Tonight's crappy. Tomorrow ain't too bad. And there's just a good chance of more chilly and drippy days all week. But who knows? They don't know. I don't know. Ah, uh, dang it! There, enough of that nonsense. <coughs> well, you shouldn't be out here on all this weather anyways. Stay home, be safe, and save Halloween. <sighs> and get off my lawn! And we're back! back. Wait, wait. Hey Hold on, we're, we're really back? <laughs> yeah, right, right yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go make a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Again. Who do we got below us today? We we got Danny Adams and Steve Diesh. They are our Sector 13 uh, supervisors and actor trainers. Uh, and uh, it's really nice to see you guys. Welcome. Hey, wow, Steve. Steve, hey, Steve hey, I had you written down as Paco. That was weird. <laughs> Paco works. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> Paco works. All right. Guys, great to see you guys, you know. I can't, I can't wait to be back up there doing what we do. But let's jump into it and let's talk about what you do. Well, <laughs> you love that guy now that you throw him up there every so often. Show Steve, show Steve uh, what we, we should look like. This is We're making a model. We're going to do a, a, uh, a calendar this year. And you and I are going to be on it, and that's what we're shooting for. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, okay, let's get let's get real serious here. I'm gonna put my glasses on. Okay. Um Danny, what was your first day at Reapers like? Oh, my first day at Reapers, I actually started out on the hayride. Um, I was the hag, and so I got thrown out of the scene and pretty much had no idea what I was doing. Um, so the lovely Jen Marino came out and joined me and she's like, I'm not really sure what you're supposed to be doing either. So we kind of, uh, put our brains together and we came up with an awesome little skit and, um, that just kind of, I don't know, that, that's what started it for me. Um, it was always great from my first day up there. Everyone was always very welcoming, uh, understanding and it was, it was a great time. I was scared, but I definitely felt comfortable with everyone around. Right, and and then you blossom into a supervisor. I mean, the way you I, started this, it kind of made it sound like our supervisors don't know what they're doing because they just threw you out there. But I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that up <laughs> with management. I'm gonna take that up with the manager. You were winging it. Yeah, I'm gonna take it up with the manager. <laughs> the magic, the magic happened. You should. You should. <laughs> All right, and Steve, how about you? What was your first day like at Reapers Revenge? Reaper's Revenge. My first day at Reaper's Revenge was actually, it was a little frightening at the beginning, not frightening like scared I could need my mother or anything, but like, you know, what I had to do. Um, and, uh, you know, it, the, you know, Michael Blardi did set me up. I started off as a guard in sector, second floor guard, and he just told me to make a lot of noise, yell at people, and that's what I do the best. So I really, that's a nasty face. But anyhow, <laughs> um, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I mean, after the first night, it was actually our first night with the, um, with the friends and family that came up. I uh, kind of really enjoyed that. Then after that, I just was like, right, this is cool. So I really had a good time and uh, look forward to the next night and then the next night and then the next year. So it was actually really rewarding. 
Um, we didn't. We didn't just throw you to the wolves. We gave you. No, nope, I got some answer. instruction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, then with my supervisors, then was Danny was also one of my first supervisors, and you know, told me to relax. You know, and then the next year, I got given a little bit more, you know, leeway with with some of the guards from my other supervisors, and uh, you know, it was a really good time. Like I said, I look forward to every year coming back. Well, I think you guys both bring up a really interesting point. Um, you know, because the show has grown so much over the years, I, I don't think everybody realizes, you know, when you go out there, one, you want to be a part of the family because everybody can see we're a tight family. But, man, the expectations. I mean, even the first time I played a guard, I mean, I just met Paul and I came down and they threw me in as a guard. And I'll remember because – I couldn't wait for Paul to come through that night because I was about to show him what it was like. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and, but every time, every, every group that came through, I gave it everything I had. And you don't want to disappoint because you want to be part of the family. Great, great point, guys. So let me ask you this. Hold on. Excuse me. Let me take my – Paul says I look like his daughter in this, uh, this one. So I'll change back to my serious face. Uh, sorry, Alex. Hi, Alex. Alex. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to make you look like that because you look way better than me. Um, okay. How did you guys transition from being an actor to a supervisor? And maybe, like, what skills did you learn or, you know, what was one of the most important things that uh, other supervisors in management taught you to look for? Danny, go. Um, one of the hardest things from transitioning is, you know, you, you do miss acting. That's, that's probably the biggest one. But you take this show that you know and that you love, and now it's your job to pretty much make sure it's running smoothly, that timing's going good, that your actors are happy, that they're comfortable. Um, and one of the biggest things that I've taken away from what one of the other supervisors had told me was to pretty much, if you want one of your actors to do it, you can't be afraid to get in there and do it yourself. And that's kind of what I, what I utilize sometimes when training. If I'm not, a, if I can go out there and do this, then, then you should be able to as well. That's, so, a, that's a huge point. Lead by yeah, example. Great. Be, be the hype in the actor you want to see. Be, be the hype in the actor you want to see. Hey, aren't you that guy from the video? I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let me get serious for Steve now. All right. Um, okay, Steve. Same question. The transition between uh, being an actor and a supervisor, it was tough because I really love I love really love being interacting with people, not just the not just our uh, our actors and actresses within sector, but just with the with the the patrons that come through. You know, I just like to catch a reaction, you know, sneak up behind them. I'm very, I'm very people oriented. Um, I like to get in there and, and, and do things. And uh, I just, um, it was great. A lot of my, I took a little bit from everything from all the supervisors. Right. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big watcher. It's important, Steve. Like you're a people person. That's great. How do you deal with the fact that most people don't like you? <laughs> it's easy. I've been doing it my whole life. You know, I just, you know, a smile, a smile, wink and a nod goes a long way. You know what I mean? I love it, brother. <laughs> you so know, good, so good the bus chops with you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> no, but like I said, other than that, you know, all the supervisors have been great. I mean, I've gone to Kelly a couple times, asked some questions. You know, Jen, Michael, Danny. Um, I've just, you know, even, even um, uh, Matt, they've all given me some, you know, great, you know, inspiration to, you know, just like you said, you got to lead by example, you know, and same thing that goes to the actor training courses. If they're not seeing you as a supervisor get out there and being uncomfortable, you know, or feeling like you're uncomfortable, they're not going to want to do it either. So you got to let it all hang out as a uh, supervisor to get them to follow um, and then eventually maybe become leaders themselves one day. You're absolutely right. Uh, Kelly, how do you usually say it? It's the art uh, get, of... Get, get comfortable being uncomfortable. uncomfortable. That's it. That's Damn it. right. That's it right there, mm -hmm. guys. And we, and we train people on that all summer long. I think a lot of people don't realize that during the summer, other than a, an excuse for us to get together and eat uh, and have good food and have family time, we actually do our actor clinics where, you know, throughout the summer we're working on that stuff. And we will be doing it this year with a six foot different uh, distance. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, okay, uh, okay Bill, Bill Clinton will do your, uh, your last question. Um, 
So, well, I got two more questions for you guys. So, as a supervisor, how do you get your actors excited, you know, like pumped up for the evening? Is there certain training things that you might start the evening with, with like a chant or blah, blah, blah? You guys are from the same attraction, so you can kind of back each other on this. But, Danny, lead in. Um, one of the biggest things that we've always done with Sector is we have a pre-show little powwow where we just kind of all get together and we say, hey, these are your expectations. This is this is what we're going to do. We're going to kill it. We all come in. We put our hands in. We shout either Sector or Team Psycho. Um, as silly as it sounds, it really gets the actors hyped up. And then I know uh, myself, Steve, and Michael will try and go scene to scene prior to opening the show just to make sure our actors have everything that they need, um, kind of give them their own little spiel to hype them up a little bit. And then um, throughout the night, it helps when they see us and we're coming through and we're making sure that they have everything that they need and that they're comfortable. And it, it just, when they see you out there with them, I really think, you know, it just, it hypes them up as well. And again, not being afraid to get in there and, you know, if a scene's lacking energy, if you can jump in there and act for a few minutes and bring that energy, it always seems to um, definitely send it through the room. Yeah. Right. Well, Steve, elaborate on that and, you know, touch on the fact that you and Danny uh, kind of took over Sector from Michael last year. Michael has other responsibilities up on the mountain now and has blossomed into uh, great, getting great content and all kinds of things. Still checks in with you, but it kind of was your guy's show last year, you know, and he's kind of transitioned it over to you guys so he could do the other stuff. So tell me something else about uh, what you do. Okay, well, the same thing. Michael usually comes down right before the show because, believe it or not, Michael has a big presence on that mountain no matter where he's at. So he gets some going a little bit for us, you know. And then, uh, like I said, like Danny said, we uh, we go to each of the scenes, check out everybody. Presence is a big is a big thing with your actors and actresses. They see you there. You walk by them out of the sight of the uh, out of the sight of the pages when you're giving a little pat on the back. You know, wait, thank you, you're doing great. You know, it really it really builds them up a lot. Um, the, the, the thing is to keep it because it's so, it's so involved in sector and so gung ho all the time. We, we, we try to make, get them to pace themselves so they're not burning out within an hour or so, you know what I mean? So we get in there and we try to come around, you know, it's nice to see when we deliver our snacks ourselves, you see the supervisor bringing in a snack or something like that or a water, you know, um, last year we did, we did the hot dog night the one night and it was, it was, it was, it went over great. So it's just, it's pretty much, you know, you have to. You get more more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. So I mean, everybody's out there. It really does. The, the elements get really bad sometimes out there, and you just got to keep them up. And if they say you remain positive, they're going to stay positive themselves. Well, that's a great point. And well, I you set the tone. Back. Well, I think it ties back into what we were saying earlier. Lead by example. Don't ask anybody to do something you're mm -hmm. not willing to do. And the fact that you're in there and showing them that the supervisors aren't just hanging around out back smoking cigarettes. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if either of you two smoke. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm just using it for instance, you right. know, like, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's something where we're not just saying, okay, good luck. Go, go enjoy the show. Have a good time. And we'll see you in four hours. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. What are you thinking so far, Kelly? I mean, should we ask uh, them one more question? Yeah, absolutely. I think they've earned it. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. You know, the fact that you wearing a very special shirt to my heart. I want to. I want to sing something right yeah. now. This goes out to Mr. Paul Koch and one one of the other owners. Said this is what it sounds like. He got, he got an opportunity to let me come <laughs> in as an owner this year, and I want to say, Purple Rain, Purple, Purple Rain. rain. <laughs> for you one more time on the rocks at the VIP lounge in purple rain. Purple oh, rain. rain. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was for you, Paul. Let me tell you, brother. I can't wait until you're at the VIP lounge and you're up there and you're playing air guitar. I love it because I take my vitamins all day and I make sure that I'm there ready for you so they can yeah. fall in the fire because I saved you that one time. Woo! Okay. <laughs> that. Okay. That was really weird. Um, okay. So, so let's get to the best question of the evening, and then we'll let you guys get back to normal life. Um, but we miss you. Um, okay. If you could work in another attraction other than Sector 13, where would you work? Danny, where would you work? Um, again, I feel like that's such a trick question. It but, is. Um, it is. One thing, well, 
obviously, I, I don't know, I've always wanted to tinker around in the carnival a little bit. And I, you know, Pitch Black's kind of our neighbor, but I did uh, originally start out on the Hayride. And I do enjoy the theatrics of it, having a theater background and whatnot. So I would probably say um, maybe one of the scenes on the Hayride as far as um, maybe even Alice. So, but, but what about being a supervisor, though? <laughs> like, what about being a supervisor at another attraction? Would the Hayride oh. still be your choice? What, for a supervisor? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just interested. Well, there, there happens to be a new <laughs> option this year. <laughs> that, uh, that there's just so many, um, so many different acts, aspects to it. I mean, of course, I'd love to to work with um, all of the other supervisors on the mountain because they're all great in their own ways. Um, again, like I think I have a lot to offer when it comes to like the theatrics on, on like the hayride and and such. But I don't know that I could actually answer that because they they all have their own their own ups and downs, I think. But that's one thing I enjoy about like our supervisor meetings is the fact that even though we're not in um, one attraction helping run it, we can still kind of put our input and our ideas into it. So I'm gonna go with Jesse and Piss Black. <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, you know. before we get to Steve, the one thing I wanna say, you didn't disappoint. I like how you tiptoed around the fact that your husband runs the hayride and love you, Matt. I know he hears it in the background. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, you tiptoed around that well. Uh, very, very well played. Okay. <laughs> Steve, tell me, where where do you want to be? Like, if you weren't in Sector, I know Sector means the world to the two of you, but where would you? Where else would you like to play around? Well, as I said before, I like being up close and personal with all the, uh, with all the patrons that come and visit at, at Reaper's Revenge. So, I would we, love to be we in, don't in, need in, anybody. We don't need anybody at the Port of Bodies. Anyway. No, well, that's where I'd like to be. I'd like to actually... <laughs> It's it's not really an attraction so much. It would be it would be a, a roamer to get more interaction with the uh, with the with all the um, the visitors that come in because I just like you know just just the, the eerie stare, just looking at, just getting some reactions out of people, and just you know that's where I would that, that's where I would like to be. I don't know if it's actually an attraction. You know, to me, the whole mountain is the same. It's a it's a big attraction, and um, you know, other than that, I, he is. I know and he does. <laughs> I would like to, uh, you know, you know, throughout the years, as, as long as I'm still not in a wheelchair, uh, you know, I'd like to be, you know, a, a part of each one of the tracks because you all you learn no matter where you go. So I mean, that's what I'm looking for. More I'm, equal opportunity, even if you were in a wheelchair, I have a spot for you. I would be there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll push you around, man. I don't got a problem. That's with that. Beautiful. Well, if we're, we we both might end up in wheelchairs. And man, I'll tell you, I hate that. I pity the person that has to push the both of us. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> uh, listen, guys, the great the answers. Great. Yeah, love seeing you guys tonight. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. Amen. Thank you guys. Peace out. So ya. Thank ya. Might like to go to the show.
show. That was number eleven yes. down the hatch. Yeah, it was eleven. I, I, I didn't know I, 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 I didn't know I had eleven fingers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan, Danny and Steve, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal people, great actors, uh, great actor trainers, uh, really outgoing, uh, great friends. Uh, yeah, so great to see our entire family coming in for this. And really interesting perspectives when you think about how people start with Reapers, how they evolve, uh, you know, how they're nervous in the beginning because nobody wants to disappoint. It's just, it's just neat how the whole family you know, it's just a, it's a family affair. All right. <laughs> I, I've been doing my best to not sing all night. We did want to give a shout out to uh, Scared of My Shadow LLC. Um, they sent Danny, they, they knew that she worked uh, in the hospital system, and they sent her a uh, pin, a, a face mask, yeah. uh, handmade, and uh, a very nice letter, she said. So I want to give a shout out to them. Thank you very much for taking care of everybody. Yeah, really, when you think about it, you know, all industries are supporting each other right now, but us haunters aren't any different, and we're all networking, we're talking with different haunters across the country, all supporting each other, stop putting that dude up there, <laughs> it's going to flash in my nightmare later. <laughs> uh, all right, Kelly, well, all it's right. about that time to tell people we don't have to stay home for yeah, much longer. be safe hopefully. out there. But we got to yep. be safe, and yep. most safe important. Halloween. God, it's not Halloween. Yeah, baby. Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't have Halloween. I, I'd be lost. Yeah, All right. Have a good night, everybody. I'm gonna see you for episode twelve real soon. Twelve, almost to thirteen, almost to the to the prime oh, wow. lucky numbers. I thought about that. Yeah. Number thirteen is gonna be pretty special. We got to start yeah. for that. We got it. See you then, right. everybody. Later. <laughs>